For more than two years, the US-based corporation Chevron has been doing multi-billion dollar deals with the military coup regime in Myanmar. The money that the regime has been able to rake in from the uh, Yadana gas project, of which until recently Chevron owned 41%, goes into the many billions. And this money, according to Burmese, Myanmar democracy rights activists, has been used to finance its ongoing war against the people of Myanmar and against their democratically elected government. I support Tamonzin, a democracy activist based in Sydney, who organized a protest outside the US Embassy in Canberra on March 27. Uh, Yadana gas project is one of the biggest sources of income for the for the military regime. Um, and uh, the two major international partners were Thailand, right, uh, through PTT. And previously it was Chevron had a big stake, 41%. But according to reports earlier this year, it claims to have sold it on to a Canadian company. But um, there's not a lot of information about this sale. And so what is the position of the campaign about Chevron's actions and the most recent transaction with the Canadian company? So we have um we have launched a campaign like last year um against the Chevron as well at the Chevron shareholders meeting. We our allies in US has um uh, raise the campaigns and ask the shareholders to vote against, um, you know, selling the share. The share, but you know, obviously, like, well, we received a lot of support from the shareholders from that perspective, uh, which was very good. Um, you know, there it was raising awareness, but in terms of, um, you know, like actually preventing from Chevron to selling their shares, we weren't successful in that. Um, but, you know, like at that point in time, we kind of guessed that U.S. has an imposed sanctions on Modi, even though EU has already done so because they are protecting, you know, they are, they are, they are protecting their company, Chevron. Like Chevron has already sold their shares and U.S. still has an imposed the sanctions. So our guess is there must be some investments, you know, Chevron must have some investments in like you know in the in any of the projects that are happening like you know the shares that they sold to Canada they might have some investment I don't know they, like it's just only I guess that we can do so far because it's not within our reach at the moment um but at the moment our our campaign is against the U.S. to sanction Moji and that in terms would have a ripple effects to even the Canadian companies who would who bought the shares in Yedada project. Like our campaign is for for US to not uh US to prevent the dollar value flow into Moji bank account. But for that Canadian company, they should have done their due diligence before they bought the shares because there are serious human rights crisis violation, like hu human rights violations and everything that are happening. And despite the fact that they bought the share means that I don't think they have done enough due diligence. They have a responsibility. What kind of responses, if any, have you had from the United States government to your appeals? Or what reasons do they give for not imposing the sanctions uh, the campaign is demanding? Well, their reason uh, not to us but what we heard from people that who approached them in the closed door meeting is they are concerned about the China intervention. So um, that's one thing. And like another thing is also our guess is that they are political interests with the Thailand. They are allies to Thailand. Thailand elections is coming up very soon. So they probably want to protect their own political interests. Um, can you give us a rough idea of how much how much money the 
the military regime is getting every year from this project. Do you have an idea? Of... Yeah, so, so at the start of our campaign, we calculated it to be 1.5 billion um, a year. A year. Um, yeah, but for the gas revenue industry that are being exported from Myanmar, it's about 3.5 billion a year, but that was the number from 2018 to 19. So this is a big part of the total gas revenue by the regime. So, yes. Yes. But so so in terms of the foreign revenue, this is the huge part. The, the, the Thai government and the company, the Thai company PTT, uh, or was it PTT EP, uh, the operator of the of of the Yandana project, um, uh, claims that you know they they can't they can't pull out of this because Thailand needs needs uh, this gas uh, to to provide electricity for its people. Are there alternatives that they could be using? Yeah, there is an alternative. So, um, the PTT claiming their leverage uh, over why they have, you know, they have no choice but to continue making payments and continue, um, you know, buying the gas from the, um, you know, from Myanmar is just an excuse. Um, in actual fact, they have been planning, um, you know, in other means and method to provide, like to supply for their um, electricity. And there are reports that PTT has already built the terminal to receive the gas imports. And then the other um, like potential provider, um, someone like US itself, US could have imported LNG gas to Thailand. And you know, Thailand would now be ready to receive the, you know, receive receive those gas import. But the only thing that would um you know that 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 would be a con for them is the energy prices the gas prices you know the gas prices that they would be paying to Myanmar compared to what they would be paying to other countries like US would be different. The other thing is um they have been over purchasing the LNG from Myanmar in the previous year as well. And also the Yelena gas field is also depleting like again it's coming to the end of the life. And therefore, like PTT could have reduced the reduce the gas import to the minimum amount as you know specified in the contract, but they didn't do it. They didn't really consider the life of you know people. They didn't really consider those serious human rights violations that you know Myanmar Junta is inflicting on the people using the money that they pay into that to Myanmar Junta. So considering all that, they could have been, you know, sensible and they could have been socially responsible. They could have been like, you know, do all this measure to save countless lives in Myanmar. All these companies that have been participating in this project, including um, PTTE and even Chevron <laughs> have given paper support to 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 what you are campaigning for, but on the other hand, they still go ahead and try to make money out of it. I just want to ask the you know like for instance Chevron selling its very big share it was a forty one percent of share to this um, Canadian company. Um, I mean, if if they thought it was a bad thing to do, you know, when they sell it to this new company, wouldn't they be telling them that they shouldn't be doing? I mean, I don't see the logic in in their no, position. They didn't. They wasn't responsible. Uh, whenever the companies are divesting from, you know, in this kind of situation. So so for example, Total Energies has um, divested. Um, saying that they're not selling their share, they're just forfeiting it, and then they're just um, transferring the operator rights to another company. Um, well, when you compare total energies to Chevron, they just decide to sell all their shares. And even when you divest from this kind of situation where the human you know, rights violations are very serious, where um, like all these atrocities are being committing, 
when you do that, you are complicit in their atrocity. You have a responsibility to divest. You, you need to engage, like meaningful engagement means you need to engage with all stakeholders. So what we're talking about is MOGE, which is a Myanmar uh, oil and gas enterprise. And it's just a gov government agency. You know, that MOGE is not owned by the military. It's a government agency. And that means that the people of Myanmar own the company, the state owns the company, whoever the elected governments um, own the company. So they didn't, they didn't engage with, you know, like activists like us. They didn't, they didn't, um, we asked for meeting, they didn't provide us meeting. They didn't engage with national unity governments of Myanmar, the other, um, you know, the, the governments that claiming to have a sovereign right over Myanmar. So they didn't do any of it. So they divest irresponsibly. And, you know, obviously um, these oil and gas company, like they have zero ethical standard. Mm. And then they then sell that 41% to MTI, Canadian company through its subsidiary company. Well, that just showed that MTI doesn't really care about what's going on inside Myanmar. So it's it's such a you know highness act mm. from now, where but, I'm standing. Um, if if a Canadian company is now buying has bought you know uh, Chevron share, doesn't Canada have some sort of sanctions regime as well? Uh, what does it tell us about you know either the the weakness of Canada's sanctions regime? Yeah. So the so the sanction regimes. Uh, the, the sanctions that are imposed to all other companies because the Canada has yes, yet to impose sanction to MOGE. So it's actually undermining all the other sanctions that Canada has imposed, claiming that they, they really care about their lives in Myanmar. And then, you know, they try, they're trying to prevent like further atrocities from happening. So all these sanctions that they have imposed previously, they are, it's undermining it because they haven't imposed sanctions on Moji, because if you have a look at it, accordingly to the Janta, like the Janta's own report, report uh, they claim to have um, 1.72 billion revenue just for the six months period coming, flowing from the oil and gas revenue industry. So it's like, you know, the governments know, they have an inside information, they know very well. So therefore it's really, really important that you know, they walk, like Canada also walk with US. US should also walk with EU Union. European Union has has been the first jurisdiction um, that um, imposed sanctions on Moji, which is very, very good. We, we really welcome that at that point in time. What about Australia's uh, sanctions? You know, Australia, you know, um, was very late in imposing sanctions it's it's i understand it's only imposed some limited sanctions on members of the junta um has there been any discussion about australia imposing uh sanctions on mogi yes um there has been numerous countless discussion um we have a campaign also in australia uh, we work with the network called myanmar campaign network and um yeah so so several um organizations you know ngo organizations like afida unions aid abroad and like Myanmar campaign network and also crbh energy support group australia and global Myanmar spring revolution as well um has been writing to the government and also there are meetings that are held between the defat and the Myanmar diaspora community as well and in the meeting, we like I was in that I was in one of the meeting, and then um, we actually like you know call on DFAT to sanction Moji, and the argument at the time is you know they don't have much leverage on Myanmar. If they impose sanctions, they won't have any more leverage on Myanmar at that point in time. Was um, Sean Tano was you know in mm. Janta's custody at the time, um, but now Sean has already been released 
And, you know, I have spoken to him and then, you, you know, we all know that Sean wouldn't like it that the government is saying that, oh, because of him, we can't really do anything about it. He would probably oppose you, which he hit, he is. Um, but now, you know, Australia can follow suit. Australia, first step, if they really wanted to, um, you know, be a, like, show that they should good, do more. Good social. global citizen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah good global citizen and they should do more sanctions um walk with singapore walk with japan walk with korea in the region and be a leader and start imposing sanctions on moji uh and then the moji's bank account so finally uh what is the next stage of your campaign and how can people in australia support it so the next stage of our campaign um, is we just have to keep on pushing, I guess. We just have to um, follow up the letter um, and get more organizations like, you know, like your organization to get involved, write letters to US, telling them that we are watching um, the other thing that Australia could also help is for Australia government to follow the euro and impose sanctions on Modi as well. There should be more sanctions that Australian government could impose and there should be a lot more effective one that should be coming because, you know, sanctions are only effective if they, you know, if, if they are done at the same time on the multilateral. <laughs> Thank you.